So now I want to introduce you guys to Ray. So I'll be kind of going through the rig a little bit, kind of showing some, some stuff about kind of how I like to work with him. And I'll, I'll go over some examples about some qualities that I think kind of suits the shapes of his expressions kind of the best. So here's some of Ludo's early uh, sketches for Ray. And what I kind of want to stress here is just sort of the balance of the expressions. These are very simple and almost sort of a caricature of him, but just kind of a, the variety of shapes that we're all kind of going for here. Just sort of the roundness of the, of the brows and the eyes, the more straight nose, the more straight top lip, and the more rounder kind of lower lip there with a very kind of rigid and specific jawline kind of filling out a hair shape that kind of goes into like kind of a nice shape that all kind of has some good flow all the way throughout the body and flow is kind of the big thing with Ray I think and really kind of all effective good looking appealing characters really kind of making sure that you're paying attention to kind of how the features are all connected so when we look at Ray in his default rig position some of that flow is kind of missing and we're, we're kind of forgetting a little bit of that. So uh, just as an example, I kind of went in and changed his default expression a little bit, just sort of uh, to give myself a neutral base that I could still kind of play with without kind of changing the expression too much, but something that sort of gives a little bit more of that flow back. Like now there's a little bit more of a direction kind of from the nose to the, uh, to the eyebrows. And then also there's a little bit more flow from kind of the nostrils to sort of the mouth shape. The jaw kind of isn't as perpendicular with the ear. There's a little bit of a tilt to the ear, so this way there's a little bit more connection to the jaw. And then I kind of went in and I sculpted this position here to be a little bit separate from sort of the apex of the eye. And I went in and kind of brought this in a little bit here just to sort of, again, improve kind of flow from nose to brow, but also it's this way, it doesn't feel like there is sort of specific circles kind of going from here to here that all kind of have the same apex. That kind of starts to feel a little bit inorganic and it starts to kind of play against sort of some of the brow shapes. Like now kind of the center of the eye has one apex, the brow has an apex in another direction, and then kind of the inner interior of the eye as an apex kind of the, going the other way. So again, these all are kind of shifted just slightly just to sort of give the character a little bit better flow throughout their just sort of default expression. So going back here, we see parallel circles. We're missing kind of that flow from sort of the nose to the brow. The nostrils kind of go straight down and the mouth is pretty wide. So it doesn't quite feel like there's that sort of gentle kind of flow, and again, the ears are perpendicular to the chin. So just little things that can kind of help influence the design a little bit, and things just to sort of keep in mind as you're actually posing the character. And then you can see that I actually altered the shape of the brows fairly dramatically as well, and the reason for that is now I kind of have ever so slightly into three distinct lines. And this kind of serves a multitude of purposes it begins to kind of define the muscle relationships a little bit by kind of giving you the sense of the frontalis kind of here being one muscle group and then your corrugator here being another set of muscles by kind of just ever so slightly kind of giving it a little bit of a of a definition here kind of starts to show that this muscle kind of has a different area of influence than the frontalis just to sort of help begin to define that muscle relationship. But more importantly, it's actually something that's kind of hardwired into our brain for as symbols. So looking at some of these other drawings here, you can kind of see that there's a lot of like really specific graphic shapes to the brows here. And these three graphic lines are really important when you're posing out your character because that's really gonna be a big, big indication of what the character is feeling. We're kind of hardwired as human beings to sort of recognize shapes and symbols in our brows. And these three graphic lines are kind of what we really kind of register and pick up on. Like you can kind of simplify all your brow emotions kind of into something as simple as three graphic lines. You're gonna to have to do a little bit more work when you're actually sculpting your brows, but it is something that is really prevalent and it's something that you'll see in really kind of any kind of more graphic illustration, but really visible in our own expressions as well. So by keeping your brows graphic, you have an opportunity to show more contrast. 
So not only does the graphic line actually create the emotion of the character and really kind of show what the character is feeling, but the contrast between these graphic shapes is really what drives kind of home emotional change and what really kind of helps us register an emotional feeling. So if this character was going from something more neutral and flat into something like this, more arched and round, you would really kind of register that contrast as a big expression change. So in keeping mind contrast, you can actually get a lot of emotional range without actually moving your brows all that much. From here to here, it's a very small brow change in terms of range, but emotionally, this registered as somebody that's going from something pretty neutral to somebody either having a deep thought or having a concern about something. And you immediately register the change happening here in the graphic change of the actual line by kind of changing the brow from that subtle and more neutral kind of uh, three graphic lines to something that is a little bit of a larger change. I also brought them in a bit. Now you go from somebody neutral to somebody having a thought. And then you can play this the other way as well. Go from neutral to concerned to slightly more bemused or interested or just curious about something with a very, very little change on the brow overall. But now instead of kind of that graphic three lines, now there's something a little bit more simplistic and smooth, which again kind of shows the release of tension in the brow. And using that contrast, you can really register the emotional change without going through a large brow move and range. You could do this in a much broader way as well. Again, three graphic lines contrasted with something a little bit more rounded and arced. Or you could do it more subtle, like in the previous example.